Fred Zinnemann once said, before the Guild existed, films were regarded as merchandise. Nobody took them seriously as a creative medium. It was simply entertainment and merchandise. It was an uphill job to convince the studios that there was more to film than that, that some films could be classified as important contributions in the life of the country. We came together not just to get more salary and authority for us, but minimum wages for the larger number of underpaid directors. The ultimate purpose was better films. The Great Depression. A new president leads a nation struggling to survive while legislation is passed granting unions the right to organize. American industry continues to cut costs, and so do the movies. In the silent era, the director was in charge, but with the arrival of sound, the potential for the industry exploded, and the studios lavished money on theaters and stages they couldn't afford. Hollywood soon faced its own crash. The moguls demanded assembly line efficiency, the color black oozing from balance sheets and savings at every turn. And the directors? They were only focused on the possibilities of telling stories. I don't want to make ephemeral films. I want to pour my heart into something that will last. He was Texas born, a man of big spaces and heart. An optimist, but also a realist, King Vidor saw film as a canvas that could capture the struggles of the average man. Man against man, man against nature, man against society. It can take years to find out who you are and respect yourself, the divinity of yourself. And you have to have the courage and the guts to put yourself into whatever you're doing. Vidor believed the director must put his individual stamp on everything he does not unlike the other directors of the day. They came from around the world, bringing their life experiences to a new art form that had the power to entertain and inspire a nation in need of a boost in morale. And they saw that the bosses had a very different agenda. This sword that the property department sent over, look, I mean, what? what? Is that, that what I'm going to fight a battle with? A lot of directors were underpaid, and being underpaid also meant that they lack authority in many fields where the director should have authority. The director, nine times out of ten, is purely a cog in the machine. But what the studios had not factored in was the passion a director brought to his work. Directors, because of the nature of their profession, some might say the cussedness of their natures, are among the greatest individualists in the world. But all of us realize the need to band together to protect the integrity of motion picture production. The moment that would forever change Hollywood came when the studio heads utilized their own Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences to assemble an industry meeting at the Roosevelt Hotel. There they announced a 50% cut in pay for all employees. Afterwards, a handful of directors gathered on the sidewalk. The feeling was very strong that anyone who stood up and objected to taking this cut was fired. Vidor's challenge was clear, to bring together men who didn't like to be told what to do or think. We must have a guild to speak for us, not the individual who can be hurt for standing up for his rights. And when Paramount announced that anyone who didn't accept the films assigned to them would have their contracts voided, the time for talking was over. December 23, 1935, 13 Mavericks secluded themselves at Vidor's house, and putting their careers on the line, they slapped down 100 bucks each. They pledged to work together for one another and for those directors whose careers were more precarious. The first shot of a revolution had been fired to define the role of the motion picture director. A headquarters was leased with an exalted title, and the founding fathers of the guild began to wine and dine their fellow directors to join them. King Vidor was elected the guild's first president, and the movies and the men who made them had taken a bold step forward 
into a still uncertain future.